So I got early access to Google's new AI powered code editor and IDE. And this time is called Project IDX. And this is actually the logo of it. I mean, as far as I can tell, they have a really nice website in here. I love like this changing animation. And currently it's actually behind a wait list. So you have to join a wait list to actually get like alpha or beta access. And yes, I got the access and I'm actually super excited to try it out with you guys. But if you look closely of what IDX is, or like try to read exactly what is the mission of Google starting this new project, because already we have like tons of code editors and IDE. So look, what is special about this one? So as Google's painting is actually, actually they felt the pain of like starting a new project. So they started and created this projects IDX IDE as an experimental initiative aimed at bringing your entire full stack application and multi-platform app development workflow to the cloud. And actually I need to focus on multi-platform app development because apparently this is not only just for the web. And of course the whole thing in here is going to be powered and backed up by AI. So this is actually the dashboard of the project IDX. I mean, as soon as you get in here, you're going to be like welcomed with like templates that you can start with. For example, you can use Angular in XJS. There's a bunch of bunch of templates, which I really love about. You can import a repository in here from GitHub, or you can even start your repository from scratch using one of these templates. And here it actually just tells you what are the workspaces that you're already created. So since I've already created a project in here, it's actually a simple Next.js project. And this is basically what it looks like. I'm pretty sure it looks pretty familiar because it looks more of like VS Code. And that's because both they are actually based on the base editor or open source editor, which is the Monaco editor and you know, VS Code and the project IDX in here from Google is actually using it too, because apparently it's actually very appealing. So as far as I can tell, I really love the interface. So if here, of course, you're going to find your extensions, files, search, whatever. You're going to find your projects, files from the other side. And here, actually, your code editor. And actually, Google added this new tab in here, which they call it the preview tab, where you will be able to preview your web application or whatever application you're running on. For example, for the web in here, you can actually see, you know, your web browser, or maybe if you're running iOS. And remember, Project IDX is like multi platform app developments. So iOS is supported too, and it probably Android, but I couldn't actually get running these because apparently Google paused the simulator experiments after like evaluating the feature and user feedback, probably there's some issue they were reactivated and pretty sure pretty soon. And I'm guessing it has support for other platforms too. And as Google announced, they actually allowing you now to use Gemini models or, you know, the generative AI model by Google, they loan you to use that for project IDX to actually, you know, use the power of AI or generative AI to help you build and maintain your projects, which of course, I love that. So this will simply just play around like an AI, inline AI assistant that allows you to write code, read code, maintain or refactor code. And you actually just can go ahead and ask it something like this, where you can just type, oh, create a post endpoint or something, and it will allow you to do that. Of course, we've seen many other editors do the same thing like cursor before, or you can use those, you know, VS Code extensions using GPT or using your GPT token. There's a bunch of stuff, but I really want to actually give this one a try. So you can actually access this tab through the command panel. So for example, you can do eight IDX, AI, and you can actually do, oh, start an IDX AI conversation or add comments for selected code or do anything with selected code or even explain selected code. So for me, I have this tab in here and actually you can go ahead and talk about anything. So for example, I can go in and select this code in here, like, oh, flex and minimum height screen of like the Tailwind class is, and I can say, oh, explain selected code in my editor. And it can go ahead and actually just use the selected code in here and actually explain it. But apparently it doesn't tell you or use exactly the selections I'm trying. So it just goes beyond the selection I've did. Like I only selected this piece of code, like these two Tailwind classes, but it went through and actually selected everything for me. I don't know why, but actually explains it pretty decently. So like, oh, dev is a container elements and, you know, text three XL and stuff. And I think that's pretty easy. So right now here, I'm going to put it into the test and actually have this simple prompt for it. Oh, like, oh, can you build me a simple pricing cards page inside of the home component using Tailwind CSS? And we need like three pricing cards, each with different benefits and tiers. And we want a minimal but good design. So I'm going to just go ahead and actually ask the AI in here. I don't know if it's using the Gemini model behind the scenes or uses because I've read on some couple of blog posts by Google that behind the scenes, this AI model uses Kodi AI model, which is I don't know if it's belonging to Google or anything. Um, and here you go. So like it cannot access the user local files, um, whatever that thing is. Um, 
So I think that's a pretty bad start. So I'm going to actually go ahead and copy this and rephrase this. I'm not going to do this inside the home components. Uh, I'm just going to do page using table CSS and see if it does give me anything in here, like while chatting with the AI or like it doesn't have the capability just yet to write inside of the code, maybe add comments. Yes, but um, all right, so it just gives me something. It gives me some HTML in here. It uses class. It's not using uh, GSX. So can it give me like the full GSX now? I don't want HTML. Um, and it's the code is cut off. So like it, it doesn't give me give you the full thing. But actually, you can go ahead and copy this one. I know this is not gonna be good and it's not gonna work. But I can probably go ahead and copy uh, this one in here. I can just go inside of the main. Um, I don't know if I need to add another div or something to close it. Yes, or maybe another div. Okay. Um, and if I go to the preview in here, like reload quickly, well, it gives me a pricing card. It gives me two pricing cards. Apparently, it just does something decent. I'm not saying it's it's really bad. And yeah, it's like responsive as you in here, so that's good. Um, but it doesn't actually support. It, it's not like in black. Well, that makes it pretty bad design. Well, of course, we can change that one, but the cards are not really that good. Plus, it didn't give us the full code, which is pretty stupid. So even GPT 3.5 can do that. So in that blog post in here, they have, you know, this really nice where you can just ask and it actually adds in types in the code. I'm looking forward to that maybe because it's still in alpha. So there's still a lot of development going on. But I'm looking forward to try this feature, maybe another video. So I went ahead and actually tried another project. So there's actually the Vercel um, next year's like e commerce store in here. So I cloned the project in here and have it like set up in here. And what I want actually want to try the second feature of the IDX AI, which is like, you know, you give it a code or a piece of code in here, it allows it to give you comments of that code. So I can just go in and select this, I can do uh, IDX add comments to my selected code. So if I click enter in here, um, hopefully you should go in and add comments. Well, apparently it did It actually looks pretty good. So um, there you go. So there's actually the comments if I just go ahead and copy this one. I mean, it tells you there's actually a button in here that allows you to insert it right over here, which I like. Oh, cool. So like you, you click and it gets inserted. That's pretty nice. I love that. So yeah, there you go. It's actually the comments and it looks like recursively checks if the given area is a prototype. They look pretty decent. Actually, they look pretty accurate. So at least they didn't fail this time. So you're probably wondering, will this like replace VS Code or any other editor? Probably not because it's actually in the cloud. So it's completely different. I know it's really good. I love this environment. I love this idea. I love the, you know, powered by AI sort of thing. It's still a little bit buggy in here. It's clear, like as you saw, the AI stuff's not really working perfectly, but I'm looking forward to like maybe the beta or the more stable release. So you can just give it a full try on another video, like full review of that and see how it does then. But anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.